hey guys what's up and welcome back to the channel hope you guys are good now in my last video release which was the behind the scenes for the energy drink there were a lot of requests for an editing breakdown um, now whilst that's gonna take some time to come to do a full editing breakdown for the, for the full video there was one shot in particular that stood out and a couple of people had asked how that was done and that was the shot where the two cans were spinning on the screen so I'm just going to break that one down for you um, show you how that was done okay then so we are in Premiere Pro and we have our shot on the screen so this is a shot of the can spinning so if we have a look at this that is essentially our shot uh, at a constant rotation at that speed in real time bring it back to the start so the first thing that we're going to do is to mask this can out we want to separate the can from this background and what we're going to do is select our mask tool our pen tool and we're going to draw around the can so once we have carefully drawn our mask or path around this can then we would end up with it isolated like this so if i was to play this through again you'd see that it's spinning without the background okay so here's one thing to bear in mind if i just show you this up close let's zoom this in a bit so let me scrub through this and I can show you. So now you might have to put some keyframes to adjust your mask to capture, as we can see here, this wasn't a clean shot where the can was spinning vertical, like absolutely vertical. So you might have to tweak this mask left or right if your can goes out. So after a bit of tweaking using keyframes, we were able to get uh, a good result from this. So. The moral of the story here is that the straighter or the, you know, the more vertical you can get your can to spin at 360 degrees, then the less work you'll have to do with masking this. Okay, the next step for me at this point, I wanted to add some speed ramps. So if you look at this clip right here, you can see I've added some speed ramps in here. And if you don't know what speed ramps are, then there are quite a few tutorials out there about how to do speed ramps so just have a look it's slow here and it speeds up slow speeds up as you can see with the uh, speed settings on this particular clip and this was simply to give the effect of the can speeding up and slowing down at intervals on its own so moving on what i'm going to do is nest this clip and i'll explain why i'm going to nest it so i'm going to nest this clip and we have the nested clip right here on the timeline this is the first part of it so if we just scroll through this we can see that the uh, speed ramp apply now one of the reasons why I nest clips after speed ramping them is because I would want to further tweak them I would want to further use scale uh, position and scale keyframes and a lot of the times it doesn't like it so Premiere Pro doesn't really like it sometimes if you have those keyframes as in the position and the scale on the same level as the speed ramps for some reason so the, the, the workaround is to just um, apply the speed ramp then nest it then apply your scale and position keyframes to that nest and then what I did was duplicated that sequence and just reversed it so command R and reverse speed so we just reverse the whole clip just like that. Now what I'm going to do is just make that into one clip again by using nests. So I'm going to select those two, right click on there, nest. So now we've got a nested clip as such. So it's, it's a singular clip if you look at it in this way. But we can always go back in or go back down a few levels and make some tweaks if necessary. So here we have that whole thing and we're spinning left and we're spinning right in one clip so what we're going to do now is just add the reflection to the bottom of the can on this so we're just going to duplicate this clip so easy way to do that is to hold on the option button on the mac click on the clip and drag it to wherever you want to make that duplicate now on this duplicated clip what you would want to do is add an effect called vertical flip and this is going to create your reflection so we've added a vertical clip from the effects so you go into your effects, search vertical, 
should come up here as a vertical flip on the transform. It's now essentially turn this upside down and then you can just move it into position. And then now if we play that, we can see we have the reflection moving in tandem with the clip above. So now what you'd want to do is make the reflection a little bit more believable because you would want to add a nice little gradient here so the op opacity of this reflection fades as it gets further away from the can. And the way I've done that in this instance, or I would do that, I would add a crop to this and then just tweak this parameter from the bottom. And as you can see, as the crop goes up and down, you can see that's affecting sort of the opacity of that one. And then this is actually the fun part where you can really go ham with this one. So what I've done in this particular instance here is I've made triplicates of these. So I've just duplicated that nest twice and then adjusted the keyframes on each of those nests. So then I can move these from the middle and essentially those ones that are behind the first can and just move them from the middle out to the right. And remember these are on a transparent background so you can have so much fun with this. For example, it's on this, I mean, you, you can change the background to whatever color you really want, you know, um, and it's gonna make it a lot more interesting. So yeah, using keyframes again, we're just moving these wherever on the screen that you want to move them. So if we look a bit closer at just one of these, for example, let's look at the can that's moving to the left. We've selected that and now we are looking at it in the effect controls. And if we go back to the side of the clip, we can see on the X axis, we're in the middle. And as we move forwards in the clip, we can see the X axis changing and that allows this can to move to the left. And if you're familiar with keyframes, by the way, then, you know, this is, you know, you, you already know this. And as we can see, as we move forwards, then we come back into the middle with that position in. Right then, so if we just dive in to the actual edit where we have the two cans. So as you can see, let me just scrub through here. That is the principle. The principle does not change about what I just showed you. So I've added a background. Like I say, I can change the background. Let me just remove this. That's, the, that's what it would be. And this background is a sample. So if I move on to this next clip here where it comes in to the shot, what I've done is created a color mat and I've sampled this color right here. So it's not fully white, but I've sampled that color and I've used it here. And that is that color for this color mat for the background. So it makes it looks like it's on the same surface as those cans in the next clip. And again, keyframes were used to just change the positioning and the scale to move these off the screen. And we transition into that next shot. Okay, and that is essentially it, guys. That was the breakdown of how I created that shot. I uh, hope you found it useful. I hope it made sense in this explanation. I did try to explain it a bit in, in the comments uh, on the last video, but I hope this cemented that and um, you guys have a better understanding about how I did it. And that is it for today, guys. So if you enjoyed this, do smash that like button. Remember to subscribe if you haven't done so. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.